This isn't GSCPL. This is BKCPL week two. We have two GSC games. That's two, two, two. Is that Overwatch one? Nah. This is a peak. Uh, this is peak Pokemon. And by peak Pokemon, I mean Nail versus a real Jester. Let's see how peak this is. Jinx versus Nido King. Of course, Jinx is massively advantaged here. Can click pretty much any move and get away with it. But Cloister is not always gonna be favorable there. It's a good move, because what beats Lovely Kiss, Psychic, and Ice Beam? Sleep Talk Snorlax. What wants to come in on a Sleep Talk Snorlax early in the game to set Spike's Cloister? Of course, if you Ice Beam there into Zapdos, Zapdos is in a horrible time. So most people don't consider going to Zapdos directly into a Jinx that could very well push Ice Beam. Thunder on Lax. Does a chunk. And this is, oh, it skillfully prevents the Cloyster from coming in. But Zap on Zap also preventing the Cloyster from coming. These Zap doubles, these Zap switches have been somewhat dubious if uh, the opposing mon stayed in and actually clicked the big attack button of Ice Beam or Thunder. Except they didn't, so they got the massive momentum. And now Nael is back on the back foot. And a real gesture presses the advantage, not wanting to let a double decloy go unpunished, but instead nails a Zapdos. Zapdos switching into Zapdos how many times this game? At least two so far. Rests immediately. You want to rest second in this scenario, but it might just leave here with its life. No, it's going to press the advantage. Thunder misses Sleep Talk Hidden Power. Crits. A real gesture may also vacate the premises here, and it and they do so. They're lax, and it's just an HP. Now do we see a Cloyster from Nail and a Double Edge? It's a Double Zapdos, let's go. Oh, and you- why? Why? Lix is free here. Sure, I can double the Cloyster. Alright, go to your lax. At least barely punish the Cloyster. Why? Why? Thunder are the Thunder is free here for Jester, and he can just stay in and get lefties at the worst case. Like, like why? Don't make reviews with your cloisters, people. Play him smart, not play him clever. So Chloe goes down, and there's an S beyond. Okay, well, it's this team. You know, this team's pretty okay. Uh, it. It looks really good, though. Really good into <laughs> Nido King stuff. Um, unless it's a tar, like non tar Nido King stuff, it goes insane against. But the presumption is Nido Gar Tar, which still does very well against, as if that if Zapdos doesn't miss Thunder when it needs to. But a low HP or like a sleeping Zapdos, yeah, it's always BP SB when you see Jinx Zapdos, or almost always. Zapdos takes two double edges to drop here, and it's not HP water, most notably, but yeah, it is Lix here, so Jinx goes insane, crits the HP on a roar, that's brutal, because the Jinx comes in and gets to click Ice Beam, you just accept, uh, you don't, you don't even, I don't even know why you'd accept, I don't even know what I'm talking about, you can, yeah, that is some skillful switching from Jester, but, like, the more times you get to click Ice Beam, the better. I'm surprised they did not stay in to Ice Beam on the Lax or Cloy switch. It. I don't know why you switch in Cloy, actually. It's gonna have Psychic on a BP pass team. On a Growth pass team. Lax comes in, it's probably, probably Sleep Talk. So, probably Mono Lax, which you can get away with, with Double Psychic. Body Slam is also fine, helps Espeon. Morning Sun out of bad scenarios with para support. Both tank their time here. And Chloe gets a boom crit on the lax. Uh, Jester's like, this is justice for the crit on my licks. Espeon just gets sacked. And things seem to be falling apart for Nail, and he recognizes that. Now, this one just happened. Like, just barely, I barely missed it live. People are still discussing in the uh, discussion chat. So, we see uh, E-Team Mango versus Agent Keval. 
Jinx on Zapdos, switches to Lax, and Zapdos goes Thunder Wave? Huh? Okay. Um, that's a weird play. Sometimes it is reasonable to Thunder against Jinx turn one. Because if they over predict and ice um and don't ice beam, if they lovely kiss into you, uh, when you're sleep talks Zapdos, you're great. That's great. That's ideal. Um, but even if they ice beam you, if you hit your thunder, you threaten to to it KO like you to it KO with thunder, and they to it KO with ice beam. But you're faster. But thunder wave Zapdos means non rest. So do you really want to take all that chip damage on Zapdos without being able to rest it off in exchange for paraing a Jinx? Maybe this team really wants Jinx to be slower than something like a Marowak or a Rhydon or a Machamp. I, I don't know. Alright, so uh, Lax gets parad. Cloyster on double edge. Probably going to spike up here. And spikes into Cloyster. Now you can Toxic or you can just get out of here. It is not Toxic. And the opposing spin... Mm, is it spin me? It subs uh, to blank a potential Toxic. It is spin. So you usually want... It depends on if you really, 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 really value... Having your spot, like, if you do not want your Chloe Toxic at all, cannot risk that. But a lot of players would stay in and Toxic the opposing Cloyster there because you want it Toxic. You want it to be slowly chipped. Agent Caval was checking the sample teams. Wait, what the crap? Okay, EQ crit. Yeah, so I was getting distracted by them checking the sample teams, but they accidentally typed the wrong command, so they broadcasted what they were doing instead of just pulling up the sample teams on their own side, which is very funny to me. Uh, Zapdos just thunders into lax. Nidoking dropping was really bad. <laughs> like, that's kind of sucky that you get EQ crit immediately. Why this har? But Agent Caval did not have great twitches to Nido King, presuming this lax is not sleep talk. It should be sleep talk, though. It should be sleep talk, by all means. Like, it should be mono lax here, because you have the Tyranitar, and your Zapdos not sleep talk, but it's thunder. Why is it body slam thunder? That doesn't even get the 2 hit KO on Cloyster. You have to thunder thunder. But they do call the boom, right? What am I looking at? Please be sleep talk, Lax. Please be at least sleep talk. Um, but even if your body slam thunder, it's probably better to not take all that excessive chip on your Tyranitar. And you just switch to Lax, especially if they LK into you. Like, it's unlikely that they'll LK because of Jinx. Um, I guess... Tyranitar avoids Thief. So that is a good point against it. But seeing this squad, the last is probably Gengar, meaning um, your Tyranitar is very valuable. Incredibly valuable. Because that's how you're going to get rid of the Gengar for your Lax that can only Thunder against it. And uh, your like the opposing mono lax is that's how you stop it from just setting up and winning so i think taking the eq there was dubious marowak gets unlucky here does it call the zapdos switch correctly and ice and rock slide yeah it does gets the crit gets rewarded for it but jinx comes in that makes sense why you want to jinx so 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 uh parad but i think switching to lax is usually better there and then you can go me on like lax and take the lk um and then you can go to me to wallet i don't love this team it's this team of six like all the variants of it i think it kind of really wait what am i looking at 
sub rapid spin psychic. I just internalized this. You better have surf, right? Please don't be the dumb star me that just loses to tar with recover in the last slot. That's so dumb. If you have that star me, it's so bad. Fresh like whack. I don't like this team of six. It's just like. Alright, let's switch into Thunder. Alright, my options are Snorlax or Marowak. With spikes down, both of those do not love switching into sun Thunders. Because it's just, it's so annoying. Like, if they make their call correctly and HP the whack, it's so bad. Your major win con just can't do its job anymore. Do you call the boom correctly? Will they call you out? Go to Gar. It is Gar. It is Triple Thief. And you just flat out boom. Okay, well, that was a little hasty, I thought. You could probably just teabled or thundered there. Because what do you do against opposing Snorlax now? You better be cursed. I, I don't understand what you're doing here you probably have to go to your lax and set up right now but no it's a good thing that jinx died you should go in and click s curse because you need to be able to live the cloister okay maybe you're not curse hmm well triple thief loses another game i just i don't like this team or this team i don't like either team <laughs> I don't enjoy using them, and I don't enjoy playing against them, because if you make, like, sometimes your opponents can just get away with garbage, mm, like, just dumb stuff with these teams that are fundamentally defensively poor. Bad against electric types, specifically Zapdos. Bad against Snorlax. Like... <laughs> Cardinal Sins of GSC. So that's one of the reasons why I don't love these teams. But that's just me. A lot of people do find a lot of success with them. So, there's your 12 minutes of someone sitting in a basement talking at your face while there's a Fire Emblem GBA pirate just floating in the chat box. After record, like this is like my sixth game that I've recorded in a row. It's pretty great. Holy cow, they're going nuts. In oh no, never mind. They're just scheduling. They're not going crazy in the discussion channel. Either like Marowak, Paris, Spam, OP is basically what they're talking about. There's not a lot of pair on this Paris Spam. I have to admit, there's not a lot of pair on this Paris Spam. There's, in fact, very little para. There's Body Slam and Thunder Wave. Which is some, but I think Stun Spore is better, generally speaking. Because Eggy actually paras the targets that Whack wants para, because it paras Zapdos. Zapdos is great at paralyzing Snorlax. Guess what, Marowak outspeeds without a para, Snorlax. <laughs> and then, I, I don't understand that explosion. Just Teebo, or if you have Thunder, you go for it there. Okay, yeah. Like, they switch in Whack. Ice Punch, yay. Maybe they pivot into me. You live a Psychic, and then you blow it up. With, uh, Teebo. I didn't mean to call it boom. Like, Gengar kind of just wins. Because you just Teebo the Lax twice, and it... Or, like, Teebo, and Lax switches in? Okay. It's scared of boom now. Teebo... And then you Ice Punch with Marowak, you T-Bolt Starmie, you live the Psychic and kill it. Like, I don't understand booming there. Unless you don't have T-Bolt, and if you don't have T-Bolt, why are you running Gengar on this team? Because if you don't have t if you have Explosion and you don't have T-Bolt, you're running the Zokuru set of Ice Punch, Thief, Explosion, Destiny Bond. And that set I don't like at all on this team. I get the idea of using it on this team because it bullies Tar a little better. But I just like to 
Tebolt. Like, <laughs> Tebolt. Actually, no, the more I think about it, is if that's actually a reasonable set to use on this team. But I don't like that set in general, because as soon as your opponent knows that you only have Ice Punch, Cloyster starts a disrespecting your Gengar completely. And as soon as they know you don't have T-Bolt. Uh, right, well, that is suffering achieved. Um, why? <laughs> why? 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 Here's the answer. This is a tour that's a lot of fun. We're very much enjoying this. So, taking it seriously and analyzing and all that is very fun. But it doesn't exactly completely fit in to the spirit of this tournament. Alright, goodbye.